Hey, what's up guys? Will here for GSM Arena. This is Samsung's top flagship, the Galaxy S24 Ultra, and it brings plenty of tweaks compared to last year's model. But does all of that make it a better buy when compared to the now heavily discounted S23 Ultra? It's a clash of the Ultras, so who comes out on top? Let's put these two phones head to head and find out. Samsung's Galaxy Ultra phones are their top flagships, so what's the difference between this year's cutting edge tech and that of last year? Both the S23 Ultra and the S24 Ultra are similar in size, and they both have that squared off rectangular look. The new model has a back made of the latest Corning Gorilla armor though, so it should be tougher than the previous generation's Gorilla Glass Victus 2. Plus the frame is made of titanium now, instead of aluminum. When it comes to ingress protection, you get the same treatment on both phones. They are IP68 rated for up to 30 minutes under as much as a meter and a half of water. The dust and water resistance applies to the S Pen too. The S Pen itself is also unchanged in its functionality or operation. On the front side, both the S24 Ultra and the S23 Ultra have very similar displays. 6.8 inch QHD OLEDs with a 120Hz refresh rate. However, the new model's screen is flat, not curved, meaning you may avoid some accidental activations around the edges, and it's easier to use a screen protector. Plus, the S24 Ultra uses the aforementioned Corning Gorilla Armor on its display as well. It's not only more durable, but noticeably less reflective than the Gorilla Glass Victus 2 on the S23 Ultra. Last year's model won't leave you wanting for brightness, with a maximum boost to nearly 1300 nits in auto mode. But the new model is a bit brighter, and can reach nearly 1500 nits. When it comes to refresh rate, both phones behave the same way. Thanks to LTPO tech, the refresh rates are extra adaptive to save energy when you're not interacting with the screen. The S24 Ultra's display isn't perfect though. There is some graininess that you can notice if you look at the screen at very low or minimum brightness, an issue that last year's model didn't have. Both the S24 Ultra and the S23 Ultra have stereo speakers, with very good loudness, and the sound quality is good either way, the differences are minimal. When it comes to the chipset, the S24 Ultra does have a clear advantage. It comes with the latest Snapdragon 8 Gen 3. In contrast, on the S23 Ultra, you get last year's flagship silicon, the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2. In general, the S24 Ultra posts benchmark scores that are considerably higher than those from the S23 Ultra. The difference is especially notable when it comes to ray tracing for games. That said, while the differences are clear when it comes to the numbers, you may not feel them when it comes to actual real-world use and performance. Still, for future consideration, it's nice to have the more powerful platform. And speaking of future-proofing, while both phones are now running Samsung's latest One UI 6.1 on top of Android 14, the new model will get 7 years of software support. Meanwhile, the S23 Ultra has already gotten one of its four promised OS updates. If you want to learn more about One UI 6.1's specific features, you can check out our dedicated video. Now let's talk about the battery. Both models have a 5000 mAh capacity, and while the new model did show some improvements in screen on battery tests, the differences are quite minor. The charging capability hasn't changed, it's 45 watts, and the adapter isn't included with the phone. As a result, there's hardly a difference when it comes to charging speeds between the two models. Of course, you also get wireless charging support too. Finally, let's check out the cameras. On the S23 Ultra, there's a 200 megapixel main cam, a 10 megapixel 3x telephoto, a 10 megapixel 10x telephoto, and a 12 megapixel ultra wide camera with autofocus. On the S24 Ultra, Samsung has largely kept the same setup intact, besides replacing the 10x telephoto cam with a new 5x one with a large 50 megapixel sensor. Because of the large sensor, that camera can take native 5x zoom shots as well as decent 10x zoom. The new model comes with more laid back processing across the board, with sharpening and noise reduction dialed down. Saturation is also down a notch, and there's a bit of tendency for warmer white balance in the S23 Ultra. The 3 times telephoto shows some of those general differences too. Zooming in further, the S24 Ultra's 5x camera produces finer detail and better definition than what the S23 Ultra can muster at that zoom level. At 10x zoom, however, the older model's dedicated 10x unit has a minor edge. Still, what the S24 Ultra can manage is just about as good. In low light, both phones remain dependable. 
The new model's milder noise reduction leaves a bit more grain, but also a bit more detail, which is a trade-off we're typically fans of. The two phones have similar exposure and dynamic range, and return natural-looking results, with good development at both tonal extremes. We like the photos from the 3x telephoto a bit better on the S24 Ultra too. At 5x, the S24 Ultra's output is sharper, next to the more smoothed out results of the S23 Ultra. And while the 10 times of last year's model could win during the day, the S24 Ultra tends to be superior at 10 times at night. When it comes to video recording, there's little to split the two phones in terms of capabilities, except that the S24 Ultra can record at 4K at 120fps. When comparing the two phones at 4K at 30fps, the results aren't much different. Videos from the main cam, the ultra-wide, and the 3x telephoto only really differ a tiny bit when it comes to color rendition. At 5x zoom, the S24 Ultra does have a clear advantage in video recording, with this dedicated 5x camera, as expected. For the same reason, at 10x, it's the older model's victory, but not by such a wide margin. When recording video in low light with the main camera, we'd be inclined to give the S24 Ultra the nod here. Here's a comparison of selfies from both phones, taken with the same 12 megapixel front facing camera. And of course, let's have a look at the selfie videos, captured in 4K resolution. So there you have it, guys the shiny new Galaxy flagship versus last year's top model. With the S24 Ultra, you get the less reflective, flat display and added durability. The chipset is more powerful, and the 5x zoom is arguably more useful than the old 10x one. Finally, there's much longer software support down the line. However, the S23 Ultra still holds up, and in many ways is identical to the new model, and the much lower price could be enticing to anyone looking for a bit of savings. If you want the best, and money is no object, then the S24 Ultra is the winner here, but you still get quite a powerful device with last year's model for a lot less, and that could very well be the better deal. Thanks for watching, and see you on the next one.